The Bible tells us that we have not because we ask not. So we ask today that our joy and your joy may be full. Support Worship Center Radio by going to www.worshipcenterradio.net and on the right side, click the Donate Now area. Send your love offering that we may continue to broadcast throughout the world and to bring you programming that elevates you to the next level in God. We have put the great commission given to us by our Lord Jesus in action. We thank you in advance for your financial support. From Detroit to the nations, you are listening to the world's number one Christian station, Worship Center Radio, the platform of champions. of our God. Now let us go into our broadcast. Hi, this is Jill Janik from Wall of Fire Healing Ministries, New Beginnings Nutrition. And we are called Healing for the Nations. We are bringing healing, spirit, soul, and body, bringing wholeness and holiness, purity and power, unity and oneness, freedom and fullness to partner with the Bridegroom King for the end time harvest. You know, I'm excited about this broadcast. I just want to welcome the nations to Worship Center Radio, the best uh, radio station in all of the nation. Amen. And uh, my message today is about freedom, freedom and loving, freedom, freedom and loving long and learning how to love. My question today, are you still loving and are you learning how to love and are you willing to keep on loving and never stop? You know, and that's what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ does. He never stops loving us. He is the greatest example of true love. Are we loving longer? And are we loving one another? Are we still loving and learning how to love? That is the question he wanted me to ask you today. The question he's asking us today. Are you still loving? And are you still learning how to love? And are you willing to love long? Longer than you think. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, God is stretching us in a, in a new place of love, loving our enemies, blessing those that curse us and pray for those that despitefully use us. You know, I want to pray for this broadcast. It's a special broadcast that's close to the heart of God and the heart that God has given me to bring us together into love and humility, which is going to bring the unity to bring revival and awakening. It's going to bring the kingdom of God, which is righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. And God is love. And where love is, God is. And so are we loving long? Are we loving strong? Are we loving our enemies? Are we blessing those that curse us and pray for those that despitefully use us, even those closest to us? Amen. I'm going to start doing a rap here in a moment. Amen. But the Lord wants us to cry out for mercy. 
So I want us to pray right now. Father, I come before your throne of grace. I come before your heart, God. And I pray that you would give me the, the anointing to, for the heart today. The anointing of the heart condition of the city of Detroit, the state and nation. Our heart condition of hardness, hardness of heart. That we will know the visitation in the hour. That you say, who will believe our report? The Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is asking us this question. Who will believe the report of the Lord? Whom will the arm of the Lord be revealed? Jesus is the arm of the Lord. It's his grace and mercy coming to those that believe. Are you still believing, saints? Are you still loving, saints? Are you still believing God's word? Are you still believing in the name of Jesus? Are you still believing in the blood of Jesus? Are you still believing the prophetic words over your life? But are you still learning to love? Are you still willing to love long and love strong even when it hurts? See, our belief and our loving is connected because faith works by love. So, Lord God, we cry out for mercy today. Give your church clean hands and a pure heart. I pray that you would bring your church to her knees in repentance so we can live and love again. Lord, we want to be in your glory and walk in your greatness. This is a love war. So let love be your greatest aim, I hear the Spirit of the Lord. Keep yourself in the love of God. This is the greatest power in the universe, because our daddy Abba is love. We must become love, he's saying, so the world will know. For God so loved the world. And so, Lord God, if we want a heart for the world, we have to have this agape love that enlarges our heart to impact nations with the gospel. Lord God, I pray that we would honor our brothers and sisters in the body of Christ and that we would love them unconditionally, and forgive them without conditions. Lord God, I pray that we would love our enemies, even those closest to us in our own families, in our own churches, and those that we, our colleagues, and those in the fivefold ministry. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them that despisefully use you and persecute you. That you may be the sons of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good. And he sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love them that love you, what reward have you have? Do not even the sinners do the same thing. And if you salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the sinners do that. But be therefore perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. You know, I want to encourage you, Holy Ghost, thank you, Holy Ghost, thank you, my Father. Oh, let your presence come, Lord, to convict, to prick, to agitate and aggravate until we fall down and crying out for mercy. The mercy that we need and the mercy we cannot give unless we receive it for ourselves. I pray for mercy, that it will bring us to a humbling place, that we cry out for mercy to rent our hearts on the threshing floor for our enemies, for those that are even hurting others in the body of Christ. They will cry out for mercy from their deception, from their ignorance, from their own delusionment. Will we cover them? Will we pray for them? Speak the truth in love? Or will we be offended? The Lord is looking at our hearts, saints, if we're going to see true revival in the city of Detroit and this nation. Love, love is the powerful force in the universe. Love is not naive. But it does put up with people and it does endure long and persevere. It doesn't keep a record of wrongs or rights. It sees the best in every one. Can we get our hearts and our minds positioning and alignment with the heart of God? But let God be the judge and not us be the judge. We see what we see, but let us not gossip and be critical in allowing the judgment of God to fall back upon us. Let us get on the threshing floor till we get the heart of God, that we see the best, we see people's destinies and purposes, even though they are hurting us and hurting the people that we love around us. This is agape love. And so don't react with anger. Embrace love and compassion. You know, the Holy Ghost has given me, given me this message at our revival. The revival, the Lord's told me, would be called unshakable faith and unstoppable love. And he gave me a quote from Martin Luther King. And it said, I have decided to stick with love. Hate is too great a burden to bear. See, love doesn't fly off the handle. Love always looks at the best in everyone. Love never fails. No matter what you say and what you believe and what you do for God, if you don't have love, you are bankrupt. See, the trumpet is sounding and warning us to get our hearts ready, our houses in order, 
in our churches in alignment with love, honor, humility, and unity. It is time for revival and awakening, but God is waiting on us so he can show his mercy through repentance. Give us that grace, that unmerited favor, that agape love, and the humility of Christ to be a servant, to honor our authorities, first to honor God, to honor our authorities, and to honor one another. True unity will be birthed out of the heart of God and the character and nature and the glory of God. And so that is the message I delivered and much more. We repented of those hidden sins, those little foxes that spoil the vine, the way we cover up gossip and being critical, the way we judge others. Do you want that same judgment and criticalness when you fall, when you fail, when you fall short of God's glory? Or do you want to be encouraged and you want to be corrected in love with grace by others so that you can walk in the fullness of who Christ is? We don't deny sin and we don't turn our back on it and bury our head in the sand. But we give great grace to those that are in sin because I know that when you're operating in realms of glory, you need covering, you need protection because the enemy is working harder on, on you. And so we need to come together and not, and not fight against one another and fight the right enemy because we all have fallen short. We all need God's mercy and grace. No matter what the sin, whether it's big or it affects his millions, if one person, we need to repent. You know, true repentance is coming up like Christ off that threshing floor, not the same man you went when you went down. It's not blaming, making excuses. It's saying, Lord, how did I allow, how did I allow myself to get in uh, that offense, that bitterness or anger? Did I take on other people's offenses? Guard your heart, saints. Guard your heart. Because the enemy's after our hearts. And if he's at, he gets our hearts, we won't see revival. Because true revival begins in the heart. It's not an abstract thing we just pray into. But the prayer is for our hearts. First, to get in humility and unity with God. To see if there's any sin that easily besets us. And then humility and unity with one another. To cover each other. To love one another. And to speak the truth in love. We can't be stubborn and rebellious in this time. That is, the, that is the world and the enemy's characteristics. We must come into a place of submission and obedience. That's tough. Because sometimes we have to submit to things we don't like or, or people we feel we know better. Let us be careful to know that God has placed authorities in our lives to keep us in boundaries, to protect us, not to stop us doing what God wants us to do, but to give us the counsel and wisdom that we need. And we move, need to move together as an army. And God, the good news is we are going to do this in the city of Detroit because the city of Detroit is the heart of the nation. And God is going, we're going through the flesh, fresh, the fleshing floor, amen? <laughs> and we're going through the fire right now to see if he can entrust us with the keys to his heart to bring revival that will come all over the nation. So I say yes to dying. I say yes to flesh me out even another level, God, so that I can be like Christ that he can get on the cross and he can say, forgive them for they not know what they're doing so he can do the Father's will. We'll be asked to die. We'll be asked to go to change, even when others don't change, even when our enemies don't change. But will you have a heart for your enemies? Will you have the heart for the church? Will you have a heart that Christ has? And this will be true revival. So I'm excited because this is a message that, I, you know what, I want to be corrected. I want to die to self. And I want to hear from God before others hear from God because I want to have God deal with me so others don't have to deal with me, amen? And I don't want to cause a reproach or shame to the body of Christ because my arrogance and my attitude. And so what I heard the Holy Spirit saying today as well, never give up on people. He never gives up on you. And love never gives up. Love never fails. You know, God is rooting us and grounding us in love, church. Pray for this agape love on the threshing floor. It's not eros love. That means a sexual love between a husband and wife. And it's not phileo love, which is brotherly love. This is agape love. This means married to one another. This means covenant. This means I'm not going to divorce you just because I have a bad day or you say something wrong. This means I go to the threshing floor that I stand my post and my watch and I don't leave presumptuously out of a place where I'm supposed to finish my assignment. See, we need this heart of mercy, and this is where his glory dwells, in love and humility. 
And this is where we will birth true unity. Amen. And the body of Christ to bring true revival. See, we must have the Father's heart first of his mercy, his love and humility in Christ's servanthood. See, this is the love and power, saints, in the days ahead that you're going to need in your own life, my life, his church, our cities and nation to bring the kingdom of God to save the world. So God, for God so loved the world. Wow. Can you say that? For Jill so loved the world that she gave all that she had to save the world. But in order for me to save the world or go to the nation as God's prophesied over my life, I got to have an enlarged heart, amen? I get have a heart burning. I have to know that I have tough skin and a soft heart, that I can go to the world where I'm going to be persecuted, where I'll have to obey God rather than man and get the brunt of that. Are you fit for that? Are you fit yet for that? That's why you'll be tried and tested in your own family, in your own church before you can be sent out to the world. So keep yourselves in the love of God, saints, building yourself up in your most holy faith. These next two months are going to be the greatest and the, and the greatest and the most challenging time to get the heart of God, to re repent of any unforgiveness, bitterness, anger, gossip, being critical, looking at people's faults instead of looking at their destiny and purpose. God never looks at those things. The blood of Jesus has covered it. Do we have enough power of love that we can see them through the blood, see them through love? Yes, I'm not telling you don't hurt. I don't mean that you're not going to have angry and frustration. You might throw some fits. Oh my gosh, I can tell you all the fits I've thrown. My relationship with my husband, my children, pastors, churches. Yes, this is about relationships. And you grow through those challenging times. You grow through the frustration and anger, but you, if you stay in frustration and anger, you're going to get a hardened heart. So take that frustration, take that anger, and ask God for grace with your words to speak to that person, to have relationship and communication. That is the problem with the body of Christ. Not enough communication and relationships to really understand what that person has gone through. You have not walked in their shoes or they have walked in your shoes. We need to have understanding that brings in Proverbs, that revelation and a beautiful fragrance, understanding of one another. We might not know everything only God knows, but we need to know that we have each other's backs and our hearts because you need to know people have your heart. God has our hearts. People will hurt our hearts, but do you know people that will have your heart even if you don't always get along? My husband has my heart. Do we always get along? No, it was hell on earth waiting for him to come into positioning of loving God and, and repenting and being born again and then going on another journey of sanctification and continuing to forgive. Forgiving. It's, it's forgiveness without conditions. You never stop forgiving. That it's so much a part of you become it. You don't even have to think about it anymore. It's just like default. Yep, I forgive. I'm moving on with my destiny. The enemy, even Paul, apostle in Acts 24, 16, says, I refuse to be offended towards God and towards man. He fulfilled the call of God in his life. He fought the good fight of faith. He didn't let man, he didn't let himself, or even the way God did things offend him. Doesn't mean he didn't struggle in the understanding of it, in the reasoning of it. But he said, the word also says, God's ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. Keep building yourself up in your most holy faith. Focus like a flint on your assignment and your destiny. Let no one come in between you and God and your destiny. You'll have to forgive a lot of people along the way. And a lot of people will be for you and then they'll be against you. They love Jesus one week and then kill them the next week. Don't put expectations on people they're not going to be able to keep. Love them for where they're at. And guess what? You can't fulfill the expectations of other people, and you will fall short too. Do you remember Peter? Oh, I'm going to stay with you all the way. But he fell because of fear. So you'll have followers that will fail you because of fear, and then you will also not rise up to the expectations of others. So we all fall short of the glory of God. We hurt others, they hurt us. But let's get, he let's get healed, saints. Let's not be wounded warriors and bleeding. And here comes the sharks because you're in the water and you're bleeding. And the sharks, the enemy, comes to snare your soul. 
Jezebel, witchcraft, Absalom spirits know where to go when they see your unforgiveness and bitterness and your anger. So build yourself up in your most holy faith and guard your heart against the enemy. We're not fighting people, saints. We're fighting the enemy. So you must fast and pray at those crucial times. You must get in the fire of his love and worship and press your heart, press yourself in the heart of the bosom of the Father. In the last days, it says your heart will grow cold, not yours. Your heart could grow cold in these days ahead. Even the elect can be deceived. You know why? Because your heart has been deceived. We must cry out for mercy. Cry out for those that come against us hard so that we will not fall away with the world. That will be the answer and the solution for the world. You know, fear can't cast out fear, but love can cast out fear. God wants to remove the fear out of your heart. Fear of control, fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of not being good enough, fear of not measuring up. Fear of sickness, fear of death. Because that fear is going to contaminate your faith and also contaminate your love. We've been fearful because we've been hurt. We've been wounded. Shock, trauma. All of the things the enemy has brought, maybe in our childhood, and it left us fearful. But if you can walk in this pure love of God, that's my heart, that's my contending. You will have the favor for nations. You will have the heart for nations. And you'll be able to endure in love and perseverance as our Christ loved the whole world. So saints, I'm excited about this message, but it is a message of death, but a message of life that you will encounter God's heart for yourself first. And then you'll be able to bring his heart so others can encounter Christ in you. I love this message because I want intimacy with God. I want to be always desperate for God and desperate for souls. And in order to walk in this desperation, you must guard your heart. To walk in the fire and passion, that's action for souls. You must have your heart guarded. And you must have your heart clean to have the purity of fire, the holiness of fire burning in your heart. He's changing us, saints, and transforming us in his love. Vessels of love, vessels of fire. We're becoming love. We're becoming more and more like God, an imitator of who he is from the inside out first. And so that's the message of love that God had me deliver. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about it. And I'm so excited. So I'm going to pray. Some of you feeling the weight of, the weight of our sin. God is saying, I want to take this weight off you so you can walk in this love that is freeing. This love is the freedom you're looking for. Freedom. Love is the greatest weapon of warfare. Love is God, and God is love. And so I'm after the saints. I've come, you know, when you step into revival the last uh, couple weeks, and you come out of a hidden place, and then you see miracles, signs, and wonders, you're like, God, I just want to go back into hiding. <laughs> but you can't. Because he's calling you out. So worlds, so cities can be changed, regions can be changed, but you know that your enemy's there, and he'll use people that you love the most. He'll use people that you thought were with you that are not for you anymore. He'll try to raise up people against you because they're not yet healed themselves. And they'll give you a false perception, and they'll start saying this is not of the, of the Lord. When you're seeing lives transformed, how do we know it's from the Lord? When you see lives transformed and you see the life and the character of that person. But it's amazing how one moment they'll say one thing and another they'll change. It doesn't matter. You don't have to prove yourself to anybody. You prove yourself to God. You obey God, not man. You love man and honor man. And you submit to those that God has placed in your authority. But you go on with God. Don't let people ensnare you, ensnare your soul. But if God sees you love them, you give them mercy and grace, guess what? In your time of need, you'll receive the same mercy and grace you need in your hour. So, Lord, I just thank you for this word that's a sobering word that you're calling us into. Humility is found on the threshing floor. True humility is we get off the floor and we've been changed, that our flesh has been under fire and it's been consumed by the fire of your love and the fire 
of your throne room and if most of all the fire of your heart so that we can have your heart, God. That we take those sins and we give them to you, Lord. Those sins, Lord, that we've been betrayed and, and we have ought and, and we gossip and we've been critical because we've been wounded and we're crying out for someone to help us to be right, but only you can make us right. So Lord, forgive us for our mouths. Forgive us for cursing our brothers and our sisters. Forgive us for the, even the judgments that have been set against us because we've judged others, Lord. But let us speak the truth. Lord, let us protect the sheep and help them not to fall prey to false prophets and false preachers and, and false people that are destroying your people. But let us lay on the threshing floor so they not consumed by the enemy. Lord, there's so many are deceived, so many are delusioned because they have their own rejection. They have their own fears. They have their own orphan mentality and they're leading people into ditches. They're leading people and what's on the head's falling into the rest of the body and they're consumed by performance and perfectionism and obsession instead of resting in who they are as a son or daughter of God. And so I pray that you would heal your hearts in the city of Detroit Heal the heart of those that are orphaned, those that feel they have to prove something or feel their value comes from what they do instead of who they are and they can rest in their sonship. Rest. They already have the favor. They already have the blessings. They already have the ministry. But it's out of that intimate relationship with you. So I pray for a healing balm to come upon your fivefold ministers in this city and those that are in this city that are coming from other cities. Those are being sent even from our city to other cities, Lord. Guard our hearts that we don't bring a reproach and shame to your name. But Lord, we're not looking to beat up our own or devour our own, but to pray for our own, knowing that they've been wounded and the enemy has come hard. Let us know our true enemy, Lord, is not one another, but the principalities and powers that have ensnared our souls and other souls, God. So we ask right now, we repent. Lord, I pray right now for everyone at the sound of my voice that you be in agreement to repent. Lord, we repent of our sins. We repent of showing lack of mercy, lack of grace to others when we expect grace and mercy for ourselves. Forgive us for being gossip and critical, Lord, and allowing the judgment to fall upon our cities and upon our own hearts, God. We break and bind the spirit of judgment over ourselves and the things that we have spoken. Let us love with grace. Let us correct with grace. Let us speak the truth. But Lord, let us not cross the line with only what you can do, God. Let us resemble you. And your mercy is greater than any mercy we can conceive and comprehend. When I look at Apostle Paul and the murderer that he was, that he, yes, he did it in ignorance, but you granted him mercy. Lord, we ask you to forgive us for the sin of ignorance. You know that there was a sin offering the priest gave of ignorance. And I plead the blood for the ignorance of our hearts that we have not known and understood. Forgive us for ignorance, God. Forgive us for a lack of knowledge and open up our eyes from the deception and delusionment of our own hearts for our own life, God. For our churches, for our leaders, for the city of Detroit. I know, Lord, this city is a city, Lord, on a hill. A city of holy ones, burning ones, a city where you're throning your glory and your desire is greater than even our own, that you cry out so that you can live here. You cry out so you can establish your glory and your open heavens and your angels where nations will come to be free. But you're looking for a son. A true son is one that blesses with mercy, that blesses with grace, that forgives at all times. And, and loves and walks in agape love. It's a higher calling, Lord. We can't do it our own in this city. We ask you, Lord, to heal the hearts of your pastors, your prophets, your evangelists, pastors, and teachers, because they are leading this war. They are leading this love war. And they need to know they're loved. And they need to receive love and give love the way you do. Give us heart surgery in the city of Detroit. Give us heart surgery of this nation. That we're not a people of strife, but a people of unity. Where we're not divided, but united, God. To take a stand for liberty and justice for all and freedom. So that we may be the answer to your call. So Lord, let there be an aligning of hearts this night, this day, right now. 
that we might have your heart of humility and servanthood, that we might not think ourselves more highly than we ought and think of others greater than we think of ourselves. You didn't even please yourself, Jesus. You didn't think of your own needs, but the needs of others. Lord, you poured yourself out like a drink offering till you had no strength left. Have we been pouring ourselves out? We cannot be filled unless we're empty. Are we emptying ourselves out for others, even in the face of adversity, even the face of our own enemies that we're trying to love? When you pray for love, there's going to be an all-out war. It put our Lord and Savior on the cross. But the good news is there's a third-day resurrection. And when you walk in this love and this mercy and this grace, you get a heart of fire, a heart fearless and brave and courageous. That your enemies will even bless you They'll even fall down and receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And they'll even come on your side because they see true love. That's what they've been looking for. Wow. That's what Jesus did. Lord, let us do what Jesus did and who he is. Lord, help us to go deeper. Help us to go, go lower with your grace, Father. And I'm excited because this is what the city of Detroit wants. And this is what you want. And this is what we need. So, Lord, I'm excited that it will come to pass as you have spoken it. It's not our way, but your way. And I'm excited for Yahweh, your way. Even though it hurts, Lord, it's going to hurt so good because there's going to be a sound from this city. There's going to be heaven coming down from this city. There's going to be a river of healing, a river of fire, river of deliverance. The waterfall of life pouring out from revelations will be in this city, the garden of God. It'll be those that walk as Enoch and those that operate as Elijah and Elisha in these days ahead. It'll be those Deborahs and Esthers that God's calling for such a time as this. We'll be leading the way in those armies in love, in humility, and in the power of God. You know that love and power are married together, saints. That's true unity. True unity is love and power married. But it must start within your own soul. So, Lord, we pray right now for a washing of the soul from rejection and insecurity, from abandonment, betrayal, and a rejection from the body of Christ. Remove the soul wounds and the soul tides, Lord. Break them, and every cord that's connected to the enemy will be severed right now this day. So our soul can know very well that all is well, and our soul will have purity and clarity to see our brothers and sisters the way you see them, Lord. Give us a new mind. Give us a new heart. And let our emotions be God emotions. Balance us out, Lord. Recalibrate us and realign us, Jesus, so that we can shine like that light in the world. That every one of us will bring your fire and light up this city and light up our regions, light up our suburbs, light up the world. That people will be drawn to your presence of light in us, God. And to your glory that's pouring out through us and in us and on us and in this city where geographical locations have been established for your glory to dwell. Lord, I release those portals over the city of Detroit. Where there's been demonic portals, Lord, we release heavenly portals, God. So that we will know that's the place where you have assigned angels, Lord, to bring deliverance and healing for those that are in this city that are crying out for a deliverer, crying out for a healer. They don't want religion. They want a relationship with God, with the church, and with one another. So, Lord, I just thank you, Father, right now for this word. I'm feeling the Holy Ghost right now. And so we repent and turn and change our wicked ways. And we love you, Jesus. Give us heart surgery. And I hear the Lord saying, for those that have heart conditions right now, oh, the Lord wants to breathe upon your heart. He wants to put the oil on your heart. Open up your heart right now and let him in. Let them in as you repent of that unforgiveness, bitterness, that hurt. As you repent of those people that have hurt you and wounded you. God's releasing those rocks that have clogged up your arteries. And the spiritual and the natural. So the Lord's healing your physical heart. So I'm releasing. I'm praying. I've got my hand on my heart right now. And God is releasing miracles right now. He's releasing the signs and wonders 
Lord God, right now, he wants you well. He wants you whole. He's not mad at you. He's glad about you. He's happy about you. He loves you with an everlasting love. He wants you whole. He wants you to be a part of this end time revival. He wants you to bring liberty and freedom, but you must be free yourself. So the Lord wants your heart healed. So right now, Lord, I release your healing balm, Gilead. Release the anointing and the mantle you've placed on my life, God, for your glory and for your honor to release to your bride right now that your bride's heart will live again and will pump again and will be joyful again. That your heart is upon their hearts right now, Lord, to bring life. I release life. I release life. God's putting the paddles on your heart and he's shocking your heart back to life. He's saying you will live again and you will love again. No regret. It's a season of recovery. No regret. No looking back. He says, can I not do this for you? All things are possible. Do not be on an unbelief, but believe. By faith. He said, by faith. Abraham, 23 years, waited. By faith, Abraham. He hoped against hope, but he still believed. Joseph, waiting 13 years, he kept his heart in the presence of God. Surely he could have been in unforgiveness. Surely he could have been in bitterness. Surely he could have had a hardened heart. But no, he lived in the presence of God. He allowed God to deal with his flesh. He was a man just like us. But the example of Jesus for us. How about Noah, a hundred years preaching of righteousness by faith, Noah, a hundred years waiting for the promise. How many years have you been waiting on the promise? God is saying, still believe. Are you a still believer? <laughs> Are you a still believer? Are you still believing after all you've gone through and all that's been done to you, all that you've done even to yourself? God is unraveling your grave clothes and he's saying, still believe. Still believe my promises are yes and amen. Still believe that I cannot lie to you. I love you. As I gave Noah the promise, as I've gave Joseph my promise, as I've gave Joshua 40 years wandering around with the complainers and the murmurers, could he have done that for 40 years? Joshua and Caleb. See how sin can affect somebody. But he choose not to be bitter. That generation had to die off from bitterness, complaining. Do you know the bitter root? You will fall short of the glory of the grace of God. Some of you have been bitter for a long time because of the circumstances. You say, God, why did you do it this way? Why did that happen to happen that way? And I'm bitter, Lord. So I'm praying right now that the bitterness in your soul, God would heal the bitterness in your soul right now. That you would repent. It didn't mean what they did to you was right, but it makes you free. Maybe you're in bitterness towards yourself because you have regret. You didn't do what God told you to do. God is forgiving you for your disobedience and even your rebellion. Because God's grace has come to rescue you from yourself today. To help you to overcome yourself. Saying, quit beating yourself up. Didn't I do that on the cross for you? Receive my love today. Receive my grace today and my forgiveness. Please. I don't want to see you like this. You're my bride. You're my son. You're my daughter. I want you happy. I want you laughing again. I want you loving again. I want you free. Freer than you've ever been before. So the Lord is asking us today, will you still believe? And will you keep on loving? Will you keep on loving? And then we're going to see revival and awakening in the city of Detroit. I love you, Lord. Let the glory of your glory, your unifying glory, glue us together tonight. Let your glorifying unity, God, heal us in your presence. Let a healing come to that heart today. And let us say, we're going to rise again. Never too late. Never too late. Right now. He's blowing new life into you right now. 
He's giving you another chance. And if that chance we blow it, he's going to give us another one. But don't keep on misusing the grace of God. Because it only will come when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. So receive it right now. Hallelujah. He's hugging you. He's kissing you. He's smiling on you. He said, this is my message for you today, church. This is for my message for those that are without Christ, that those that need to return to Christ, that even this night you would rededicate yourself unto the Lord. You prodigal son that's been out there in the pig pen, you know you've hurt yourself, you've hurt others. Looking, but let me tell you how powerful you are. God is going to use that stubbornness to be stubborn towards the devil and to bring and be a freedom fighter for the body of Christ and for this city. So rise up and know that his mercy is new every day. Receive it right now. Fall at your feet and be reborn, born again, again, and rise up and find your place in the army of God. Find your place in the church. Find your place back in the heart of the Father. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. And I say, if there's those that are out there today that you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, repeat this prayer after me from your heart. It's not the prayer that saves you, but it's the God that loves you. And he's saying, this is a lifeline back to me to repent of your sins, that you're not a reproach and a shame, that you would rise up to shine, to bring his glory light to this world that needs help. So, Lord Jesus, repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner, Lord. I cry out to you, Lord. I'm asking you to forgive me of all my sins. I've fallen away from you, Lord. I'm looking for my own way, my own life, realizing that I have no life apart from you. I repent and I turn away from my wicked ways and I give my life back to you at your feet, Jesus, because you're so gentle, so loving, so meek. You let me go my own way, Lord. Because you don't want a robot, you want my heart. And now, Lord, you have my heart. And I'm giving you all of me and all that I have within me. I'm giving it to you. Relight the passion. Relight the, the, the assignment, Lord, in my soul. And so, Lord Jesus... The other one that's hearing this for the first time, that they need salvation. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Make me who you want me to be. I believe that you died and buried and rose again on Calvary's cross. I believe that you love me and that you're forgiven me right now of every sin I've ever committed against you. From the time I come out of my mother's womb, I was sinning. I repent of my sins and I turn away, Lord, and I want to follow you. Give me your grace to follow you. Give me your grace to submit to you and to begin to get in your word and pray to establish this relationship with you. I turn away and I bind up the enemy and Satan and I choose not to live for him anymore, but to live for you. Bring me good brothers and good sisters that love me just the where I'm at and they don't judge me, but they help me to get me where I need to go. I ask you for your help and I want to be saved today. I want to know that I have eternal life. And then I want to live for you and know why I'm here. What is, my, what is my purpose and assignment for you, Jesus? And what I've been through, I want to help others go through. And so, Lord, I release these prayers as you've given me obedience. To be obedient to you, Lord, today with this message you have given me in my heart. And I know why the enemy had me to work so hard to get in here. Couldn't park, just almost went home to say, Lord, I'll just do another broadcast on this. I pressed in. Because I knew that the heart of God was going to be released to this city, to his people. So my heart for revival, God's heart for revival, our, all of our hearts for revival. But let us give him all of our heart. And so we just thank you for this broadcast, Lord. And I don't want to take a time to just transition as you're just repenting and feeling the presence of God today in his presence. I want to just pause. I, I can't not... Um, Stop for a moment to thank Mo from Malik Elkabob. Mo has been a faithful sponsor of this broadcast, and I want to just release prayers out to him. Mo, I want to bless your family. I will ask for the revelation of Christ, not only as a prophet, not only as a healer, but a savior to you, because he is there for you as well. 
and that this man is a man that serves his community. He serves those with the finances that God has given him to help his community. And he provides uh, food that is uh, healthy food um, to those that need health. And I just want to thank him because I represent uh, this healthy restaurant that's uh, in the community, serving the community. So let us serve our communities with what God has given us. And I bless you. And they do catering events. Um, they will deliver food. All types of uh, Arabic cuisine is just amazing. So I want to thank you, Mo, uh, for sponsoring this broadcast. So um, I'm not sure how long I got on this broadcast uh, today. I'm just uh, checking in with Juan right now. So we just got a little bit more time. About uh, about five, about eight more minutes. All right, praise God. I want to share testimonies of what happened at our wonderful revival. Uh, we just had a revival last week at First Assembly of Dearborn Heights. I want to give a shout out to uh, Pastor Joe and Pastor Brett, uh, pastors and colleagues and friends of mine. Um, they're men of God. I honor them. They're in the trenches. They're true apostles. They serve the unlovable. They touch the untouchable. And uh, I honor them for their sacrifices of prayer. Um, we pray uh, every Wednesday. They pray 24 hours a day. We all do. Um, and I'm just amazed that the God's grace over our lives where when there wasn't finances. Uh, I have to tell you, even this day, and they wouldn't want me to even say it, they don't even get paid. But you know what? God is still providing for the church, but they love the people of God that much. To me, those are true apostles that will fight for people and those that don't have any income really to give. But they come because they want to see those that are demon-possessed delivered. They want to see those with emotional healing issues healed. They want to bring comfort, and they want to bring natural provision at our food bank. And they have sweated blood, sweat, and tears. And so I'm glad to be in the trenches with people that have the heart of God and a heart for this city. And so that's why I'm so excited um, for what God is doing um, in the earth through them. And uh, Pastor Joe has a heart for the city of Detroit and for the pastors of the city of Detroit to build them up, to encourage them, to pray over them, to impart into them. I'm all excited about the, the call that he has to the city of Detroit and to the young people. And we had an uh, awesome revival. We had young people out. We had older people. We had the generations all coming together. They were hungry. We had the remnant coming together. They were hungry. And people were all on the grass. The glory of God came in under the tent of meeting. We saw people had um, saw angels saw Jesus, um, the glory cloud, young people, young children driving by were testifying of what God had done. We had intercessors praying 24-7. We had um, unity and love and humility going forth under this tent that uh, was the precursor of what had been done. And we had a, a revival team, and I'm so proud of our revival team uh, that came together. You know, we were stretched in love. We were stretched with strength and sacrifice. And we were on the streets all the last, that two weeks, out going door to door. We saw grown men cry. I had reached more men in those two weeks than it, it seemed like in a long time. Over six men came to Christ. These are men in their 40s, 50s, um, on their knees crying. I was on my knees holding their hand crying. The Holy Ghost and his love of the Father's love for them they could not fight love. Not They could fight religion, but they couldn't fight love. And the glory and the open heaven was over us to bring these men to salvation. What an honor, what a privilege that we have to lead people to Christ. The greatest miracle that you have already to bring is the, the gift of salvation. And so we saw young people get saved on the streets. We prophesied over them. We seen a shift over their hearts, over their minds, tears that fell, uh, life that where the enemy had sucked life out of them and punched them in the gut. God renewed them, refresh them. They were feeling manifestations of water and wind. You know, the Holy Ghost, when you have souls, God will work with you in the elements and he will, he will use all of these aspects to awaken us. So I'm just, I'm just contending for souls and I want it all to win souls for Jesus Christ. And, and, uh, so many stories, everyone out there, so many stories for his glory. Uh, just young people that have been in new age, people that had been uh, far from the church, 
that weren't in church. We directed them with the love of God. Um, uh, people that were in the bar, we talked to a man that um, had a TV show all over the nation that he was leading about bar restoration. And we spoke to him about his true identity in Christ. He was floored with the revelation of God. And so that was brings my fire. That's what lights my fire. People's lives being changed and transformed right in front of your eyes. And the people that we let out as a team, it was amazing. And so under the tent, I preached on unstoppable love and unshakable faith. And the glory of God rested upon me. The heavy hand of God was with me. I was not myself. I almost went into a trance. And what I mean by that, I was so um, I was so focused. And, and my eyes were like fire. Someone said they saw fire coming out of my mouth and fire on the people's heads. Fire and Pentecost has truly come. And revival has surely been released under this tent and in other aspects all over the city of Detroit, these fires of revival that have come. And so many people in the glory of God, we flowed with the Holy Ghost and we had no time. The Holy Ghost doesn't have a clock. And we just were there and contending um, through dance, through praise, through worship. Uh, word of knowledge came forth for people's backs were healed. People restored from hurts from the body of Christ. People that came that had not been connected to a body because of hurt got restored. Pastors got restored to their congregations and congregations restored to their pastors. There was truly unity and love that was released under this tent. And then... God revealed our hearts about the Father's love, and he sang through me for a half hour under the prophetic anointing of the Holy Ghost and the prophecies like a river that flowed through me. I felt the heart of God beating through me in and in, in through the people where they um, repeated the words of the Lord that were coming forth about their identity, about his love, and about humility, and about victory. You know, it's funny because I went into a love song, then I went into a victory song, and guess what, Juan? I started rapping. I started rapping, and I was rapping with a rhythmic harmony and sound that broke off chains and shackles off the minds and hearts of the people. And they came up after and said, the Holy Ghost, through that song, broke off the lies of the enemy because I used to be in homosexuality. I used to be this. I used to be that. And the enemy still had them bound by a lie, even though they weren't in that lifestyle anymore. But the Lord came in and swooped in and changed his people and transformed his people. And that place blew up with joy unspeakable and love that brought us together in unity in the kingdom of righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. So I want to encourage you that God is moving, saints. He is overcoming, and he's overcoming us, and we're overcomers. And so I just want to um, end this broadcast and tell you I love you. God loves you with an everlasting love. And we want to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. So over and out for today, we love you. Worship Center Radio loves you. The best uh, center, Worship Center Radio in all the nations. We love you, and we'll talk to you next time on Healing for the Nations. God bless you.